We need to talk. Yada, yada, yada. We've heard it all before, honey. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 cliche breakup lines. For this list, we're taking a look at the most tired and predictable breakup lines that people continue to use. You name one woman that you broke up with for an actual, real reason. <sighs> Maureen Rosillo. Because she doesn't hate Yanni is not a real reason. <laughs> Number 10. You are going to make someone really happy. Daisy, I'm sorry if I've hurt you. You're a good person and you're going to make some man very happy one day, but I'm afraid it was never going to be me. So it's just not going to work out with you and your significant other. But smile, because it's still possible to make another human being happy. There's someone for everyone. Everyone except you. With this patronizing breakup line, the wording doesn't imply that you're a bad person or even a bad lover, but just that you're not as good as you thought. You could potentially bring joy into the life of someone else, but it's just not going to work out for the time being. I think if you're committed to somebody, you don't allow yourself to find perfection in someone else. This cliche doesn't even reference a positive aspect about your personality, but rather that someone, somewhere, just may appreciate who you are, for better or for worse. So, uh, you're gonna suffer, mm -hmm. but you're gonna be happy about it. Number 9. I'm too young to be tied down. Hey, are you breaking up with me? I'm too young to be tied down to one girl. Look, I know what you're doing. Well, this is definitely a phrase for the young. But somehow, it can work as long as you want it to work. That's right, I'm like Baskin Robbins. You get one free taste, then you gotta buy the scoop. Ned, I love you, but I'm not ready to be tied down. For the most part, it's the classic postgraduate cliche, whether you're in high school or college. But what it really means is this. There might be something better. You are going to go to college next year. You'll get into Godspeed, you Black Emperor, and the f***ing shins, and you'll blow a bunch of dudes, and you'll become a lesbian, and I'll be here in f***ing Clark County doing shit all. You're going to dump me, so f*** it. Have a good time. A lesbian? And to be honest, that's fair, as nobody should settle down in a relationship because it feels comfortable. And so, this breakup cliche works perfectly for someone about to travel overseas or experience anything new. In other words, it's not a line that you'll typically hear when two people live in the same city. The time in our life to do crazy shit is winding down, and I don't want to wake up one day and see that the window's already closed. Number eight. We're just on two different paths right now. I think we're heading in different directions. Yeah, you to the John Mayer concert and me not. Thank you for doing this before the concert, by the way. Best breakup. He is the Sheryl Crow of our generation. When things are good in a relationship, all those minor flaws may seem cute. Oh, he or she just loves playing video games all day. Or he or she needs some personal time to relax. Hmm. But when the relationship gets bumpy, well then questionable personality traits suddenly become impossible to ignore. Just broke up with her. Oh, oh hi. hi. Don't tell me, because of the big nostril thing? <laughs> they were huge. And so, that daily or weekly vice that didn't seem like a big deal is now a legit deal breaker. Just so you know, it's not that common, it doesn't happen to every guy, and it is a big deal! <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> of course, it all ends with a simple cliché. We're on different paths. And most often, it usually means that you just really made somebody upset. How do you tell someone that you care about that you don't want the same things they want anymore? The best way? Definitely having sex with the roommate. Number seven, I need to focus on me slash my career. The thing is, is that right now I'm just in a place in my life where I just need to focus on me. Mm. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, I know. At a certain point in a relationship, that look of romance evolves into a look of discomfort. And that's when you can expect the career cliche. I I've just reached a point in my life where I need to focus on my career. I just don't think that I have anything to give at the moment. For anyone in their 20s or even in their 30s, this line works for a variety of reasons. But it mostly works for practical reasons, as it just may seem better to be recognized as workaholic rather than somebody drunk in love. Drunk in love. Then again, some people just need to figure things out. And even though the cliché is played out, it still makes sense. So it's all a matter of delivery. Do you genuinely believe the cliché? Or is it about the performance? If I'm going to be a senator, well, I need to marry a Jackie, not a Marilyn. <laughs> 
So you're breaking up with me because I'm too... blonde? Number six, I just need space. I just need space. Well, I don't. In fact, I want as little space as possible. A hundred clowns crammed into a Volkswagen. That's the kind of non-space I'm talking about. This cliche is the basic response for almost any situation, regardless of whether you're stressed or annoyed. After all, some people can get all up in your business, and that's when you need space. Of course, others may completely ignore everything you do or say, and that's also when you need some space. Just go home. I just need some space to think at the moment. Okay, fine. So I'll see you later, yeah? Most likely, you'll probably need space anyway if you're dependent on your significant other. And while space isn't necessarily a bad thing, and it's not unreasonable to politely request a little extra room. God damn it, Katie, you're suffocating me. I'm choking, all right? Give me some breathing room. But just remember to communicate why you need space rather than expecting your boo or soon-to-be ex-boo to read your mind. I think I just need some space. Space? Totally get it. I, you're talking to the dude that went to space camp. Number five. I think we should see other people. Or, you know, um, I think we should see other people means, ha <laughs> I already am. <laughs> and everybody knows this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Cushions the blow. While this cliche may seem like an upfront approach to finalize a relationship, some people have been known to use it as a test, meaning it's all about the reaction. I think we should see other people. Were we not seeing other people? If someone breaks down immediately upon hearing such news, while well, he or she may be too invested in the romance. Peter, I think we should see other people. Okay. Then again, a more secure person might just laugh it off. But the important thing, of course, is the intent of the person delivering the news. For one, the cliché could remind somebody that he or she doesn't know what he or she's got till it's gone. Then again, he or she might just want out and this cliché doesn't beat around the bush. So that's where my priorities are right now. Sex, specifically with Andy and not with you. But you're really nice. I mean, everybody thinks so. And I'm sorry if, if this isn't the direction that you saw things going between us. Number four, you deserve better. You deserve better than this place, and you deserve better than me. You break my heart into a thousand pieces and you say it's because I deserve better? When somebody's deeply in love, he or she can easily lose sight of reality. And when someone becomes fully whipped, Whoopa! Well, that's when this cliché may come in handy. Then again, this wording has often been forced upon so-called nice guys and nice women, simply because their demeanor just isn't exciting enough. You know what? Tonight was really fun, but after meeting Graham, I just realized that I need someone with more personality. It's an ideal line for anybody that's supposedly dating his or her polar opposite, and it cuts like a knife as well. This isn't a line for the insecure person in the relationship. It's for the person that wants to keep his or her options open. You know, in, in case somebody better comes along. <laughs> somebody better comes along. Somebody better comes along. Marco, 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 do you hear yourself? It's also the cliched breakup line that your friends scream at you about once you finally tell them what's really going on in your bad romance. Ga, ga, ooh, la, la, what's your bad romance? Number three, we can still be friends. Tom, don't go. You're still my best friend. Here's a cliche that feels like a complete slap in the face. At first, it doesn't make sense because nobody imagines friendship while he or she is still in a romantic relationship. And so, this cliché never works, even for the most responsible adults. So we're even. I think we should just be friends. I don't want friends. Ideally, the sentiment has value, but it's something you'll often hear from overly confident people when he or she has found another friend to play with. Or it's something that you'll hear when there's just nothing left to say. We can still be friends, right? Wrong. Oh! Oh yeah! Friends? Oh! How can you friends? And if somebody does actually agree to be just friends, he or she is most likely plotting some revenge. Which brings us back to the earlier rule before the amendment, which is men and women can't be friends. Number two, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. What are you talking about? Of course I love you. I'm just not in love with you. 15 months of therapy, that's the best you can do? That is the dumbest line I have ever heard. Attention married couples and college sweethearts, because this one is for you. For years, or maybe even months, you've found a certain comfort with your significant other, and together, you can poke and prod at the personal lives of others. 
Ted, I'm your best friend. Why would I root against you? Lily bets Marshall that Ted and Robin won't end up together. That's why. Does this sound familiar? Well, for many, there often comes a day when your crazy, beautiful love downgrades to some crazy, stupid love. And that's because someone has come to the realization that, hey, I don't love this person. I just love the history and familiarity of being around him or her. I don't think you ever really loved me. How's that? Please. No, I think you love the idea of you and me, but not so much me. Boom. Relationship over. Courtesy of a classic and deeply frustrating cliché. To be entered I, mean, I love into you. But I'm not in, in love, love with you. Lightly. Anymore. Oh. <laughs> Before we make things platonic with our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. But after last night, I realized that I just don't feel the spark. I'm sorry, but it's over. How could you do this? Well, she certainly did take advantage of the lifestyle my success afforded her. Oh, huh. wow. <laughs> ah, it's for the best. I'm just not emotionally available at this time. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm looking for more of a physical relationship anyway. Number one, it's not you, it's me. I invented it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Nobody tells me it's them, not me. If it's anybody, it's me. All right, George, it's you. You're damn right it's me. Okay, so maybe it's not you. And maybe there's some truth to this line. But no matter what, it's still a cliche. In the movies, such a phrase works beautifully for any romantic comedy. Because you know that love will ultimately triumph. But it doesn't work like that in real life. It's not you, it's me. I'm just trying to protect us both from more pain down the road. I may have a developmental disorder. I need to catch up on Breaking Bad. And when that special someone doesn't come running back after a personal reawakening, well, people get mad. So when someone says this cliched line, what he or she really means is, I think I know what you want, but something feels wrong. It's not you at all. Of course it's me. You can't say that. You're breaking up with me. It's not. It's me. I don't like you anymore. And while this cliché is tough to deal with in person, it's even more difficult when received via social media or text message. Innocent! You call the man who broke up with me via text message innocent? Incredible. Really? Quick and painless. It was the humane thing to do. Do you agree with our list? Can you see your name on that list, Laura? Maybe you'd sneak into the top ten. What do you think is the biggest breakup cliché? It's kind of like how they say, there's, uh, there's plenty of other fish in the sea. For more heartbreaking top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. That does put a damper on our relationship.